Hello everyone. Today we are going to do a function test of a charge amplifier. Our goal will be to verify the correct functionality of our 5018 over here before we run measurements with it. Apart from our unit and the test, we will need the following components. A dynamic lab amp, as this will be the core of our test setup. This device allows us to generate analog output signals as well as to measure the voltage from our unit and the test. Then we'll need a reference capacitor. With our capacitor, we will be able to accurately transform the voltage signal from our lab amp to a charge signal. With this, we can simulate piezoelectric sensors. And finally, we'll need two cables with BNC connectors on both ends. Before we conduct our measurement, let us take a short look at how we simulate piezoelectric sensors. To select the right capacitor, we must first ask ourselves what charge signal we want to simulate. I suggest testing the amplifier with the exact settings that will be used for measurement later on. For me, I want to use it to measure a pressure of 8000 bar with our sensor 6213B. My 6213B provides 1.2 picocoulomb per bar. Therefore, I expect roughly 9600 picocoulomb. Our reference capacitor will convert a voltage signal to a charge signal. I want to supply 9,600 picocoulomb to simulate my sensor. The capacitor is limited to 30 volt, but this is no problem since we are using our lab amp as a source which can provide up to 10 volt. The next available capacitor is the 1,000 picofarad version, which will allow me to supply up to 10,000 picocoulomb. With this capacitor, I will need 9.6 volt to supply 9,600 picocoulomb. The lab amp can source a multitude of different signals, such as pulses, steps, and sign signals. We recommend using a sign signal at 100 Hz to function test charge amplifiers. Dynamic amplifiers will always need a symmetrical signal. In the case, the amplifier settings only support positive signals, an offset may be applied to the sign. Do not forget to scale the amplitude by half when using purely positive signals. Now that we have the basics covered, let us run a function test for my 5018. First, we will need to connect all the devices. I will start out with the reference capacitor. It is best practice to connect it as close as possible to the input of the charge amplifier. Next, I will connect the reference capacitor to the output of our lab amp. And finally, I will feed back the voltage output from our unit under test to the input of the lab amp. With the lab amp being connected to my notebook, we now have set up everything for running a function test. Let's now move to the web UI to show you how to set everything up. Let us start by setting up the function generator. According to its calibration, my capacitor has 1002.2 picofarad. So we will need approximately 9.58 volt to source the 9600 picocoulomb signal. Next we will need to configure the input of the lab amp. I have set up my 5018 to a range of 10,000 bar to make sure I don't accidentally clip my signal. As you can see on the display, we expect 1000 bar per volt. I select amplitude to read it directly from the UI. Finally, we define the first output channel to be the signal of our function generator. Do not forget to cycle the amplifier through reset measure before enabling the signal. Now we can activate the output and go back to the sensor page of the web UI. Best is to wait a few seconds before reading the amplitude. As you can see, our amplitude reads 7994.6 bar. This is very close to our expected 8000 bar and I can now go use my 5018 with peace of mind. 
To be truly sure my amplifier works fine, I will need to run a proper calibration regularly. But this function test helps me to verify my device works fine right before starting my experiments. Thank you for taking the time and see you next time.